whether we've moved that money between. The member of parliament from Bali Industrial Division, Karima Saba, broke the deadlock, which lasted for hours on the contentious 6 billion shillings allegedly requested by Gender and Labour Minister Betty Amongi. Earlier this month, Amongi said the money would be used to increase compliance and coverage of NSSF members. The MPs thought this request was irregular, urging that the proper procedure should have been for the management of NSSF to generate the budget for approval by the board and finally the minister. Did the work plan and budget of the six billion come from you, the board, or not? Was the budget approved? And then the issue of six billion followed, or the issue of six billion was forwarded as a condition for approval of the budget. The question on who initiated the six billion shillings request was a sticky matter for both the board and the management. Our meeting in Serena was about strategic oversight. That's what it was. And in that very meeting, we said we shall now go back and go through the nitty-gritty of what has been presented here. You did not come up with the six billion. So who budgeted for how this six billion was going to be spent? Was it you? No, it wasn't me, Chair. And, and that is why a paper was requested, because some of the activities we're already going to do anyway. My reading from my side was that it was now up to the fund through its governance structures to say yes it can be six billion or less it can be more here and less here that decision was now left to the fund the statement drew down to whether the money was ever approved or not the board strongly argued that the request was never approved the deadlock was broken after masaba had used records of the sitting of the house when among made a statement on the matter so you're making it seem as if it is something you're planning for the future, but the minister is reporting as if it is something that was already passed and approved and is already in the system. So who is telling lies? The board is saying it is not true. What the minister is saying is wrong. We had a meeting in Serena, but we did not discuss the work plan of the six billion. Now, who do we believe? Of humidity. This committee wouldn't make a choice of who to believe or not. But, <laughs> but the point I would like to state very clearly is that the record of the board, the Hansard, I don't sit in parliament, so I have no idea what Hansard writes or whatever. I stick with what our board does. Earlier, the select committee met with the workers' representatives in the parliament who called the allegations of mismanagement at NSSF a smear campaign. They pointed fingers at the Ministry of Finance, planning and economic development. The main problem is in that Ministry of Finance. That's where the headquarters of planners are. They will know in five years we have this one, they, after two years we have this, on this we have this. There is a project coming, NSSF to build the uh, ministries, whatever offices. So how much is the cut that it will be coming? So if we remove so and so and put another one, are we sure that our process will end? The MPs back the argument with the example of the appointment of the NSSF managing director and deputy, which is always marred by influence badly. They cited the case of former managing director Richard Biarugaba, who they say should have left the fund long time ago. And the, the, the outgoing individuals also applied, but they didn't go through our interviews. And uh, we had uh, recommended other people, but because they were also, one was number three, another one was, I think, number two. So they also maneuvered their way in the same way the fights were at this level, at this magnitude, until they were able to come back as managing. By that time, it was not uh, Iota, it was Gerard and Sally and Biarugaba uh, uh, Richard. Parliament have recommended the need to conduct the value for money audit on the National Social Security Fund based on the grounds that at one point the fund had 50 billion shillings being held in a suspense account, which the management now indicates that has dropped to 25 billion shillings. The argument was that this could be used by individuals for personal benefit. Jackson Onyango, reporting for NTV at Parliament.